In this video, I'm gonna talk about why every plant lover should have a propagation box, whether you do bonsai or house plant. So this winter, between 2021 up till 2022, you know, being a person that loves to be out in my garden, out in the outdoors, I didn't want to get too bored when I was stuck inside. So I started a dormancy propagation box for some of my plants, and so this includes some of my plants for, uh, for bonsai and as well as house plants. So check out this video. So anytime you do propagation, a lot of times people tell you your best time to do it is in the springtime or when the weather warms up a little bit. However, uh, I tried out this experiment to do it with dormant cuttings in the wintertime. Um, and you're going to see in the video here uh, how successful I am with certain types of varieties of plants, including black pine, Japanese maples, various kinds of house plants, beauty berries, what else they have? Figs, obviously, in there, uh, juniper cuttings, um, and a variety of others. I'll, I'll list them out, you know, as we go through the video. Okay, here is my tray of cuttings. I've got Japanese, Japanese maple cuttings that range from Arakawa, um, rough bark Japanese maples, Mayday Japanese maples. I've got Kishu cuttings in here, uh, tip cuttings and non-tip cuttings. I've got Shinishoho, Beautyberry, White Madeira, um, and then variegated Shimpaku, which is kind of rare, Punis Mume over there, and then White Madeira cuttings here. This is a fig, and of course, the I, I don't expect these are root, but uh, rough bark Japanese black pine that I'm going to put into my propagation chamber. Um, also got some Bougainvillea in this corner right here. So anyways, this is what I'm going to play with for now. And uh, I'm going to stick it into my propagation chamber, see what happens. Uh, and I'm doing this in the wintertime, so I'm experimenting a little bit with dormant cuttings um, to see, you know, whether or not they'll root. We'll see. Okay. Here is the final rooting chamber setup that I've got here. Um, I've got all these in. So uh, very light perlite. I've got a layer of water, bricks to keep the um, you know the rooting tray uh, outside of the water level. Um, I don't want it to be soggy or soaking wet. I do have a atomizer there. These are one of those atomizers that you can use for like Halloween. You can make a simulate a boiling cauldron um, to give it additional moisture. And so I bought this little light here off of Amazon, which works perfectly, just clips onto the side of the bin. I've got a heating mat as well, dry. So anyways, I'm just going to leave this thing here. Today is December 15th, 14th? Yeah, anyways, we're really close to Christmas. And um, it's in my bathroom, actually. We don't really take baths. And so uh, I've taken over the tub. And uh, this is where it's going to sit for the next, I guess, couple of months, and we'll see the results here. I do have a lid for this, and what I'm going to do is, you know, looks like things are kind of drying out periodically. I'm going to cover it um, and leave it partially uh, uncovered because I have a lot of things that can create and grow mold in here. Um, yeah. Anyhow. So that's that. Let's go ahead and follow up with this in a few weeks. Okay, see you then. Okay, so um, I've had this thing running for about a day. I want to check the humidity uh, inside of the bin. Okay, I've got the light going in here. Uh, I have the heat mat on. I have the atomizer going to create the additional fog and increase the humidity inside of the chamber. Right now it's about 75, which I think is pretty spot on and I have the lid slightly open. So um, it's about where I want it to be. I don't want it to be 100%. I'm looking for something around 80, 80 to 90. And that puts it kind of in a good zone.
right, today is the new year, January 3rd, 2002. And uh, we're going to do a follow up here on this humidity bin. It's got a lot of variety of different cuttings in here. And uh, this is an update. So the Prunus Mume flowered and has wilted by now. I think this is two and a half weeks, roughly, maybe. Um, so this is starting to show new buds, but I don't think it has rooted yet. Um, Prunus Mume is a uh, popular flower for uh, Chinese New Year and you know we'll get cuttings put in water and it'll do the same kind of thing doesn't mean it's rooted. Beautyberry however is pushing new growth very quickly. I'm guessing that those guys have rooted. Um, that is all new growth right there. See that? This has new growth, you see that? Uh, and so that's interesting. So these things root pretty easily. I'm going to guess that the figs are kind of in the same boat. Figs will root very easily. All you have to do is just breathe on them and give it a little bit of humidity and um, they'll do its thing. The maples, don't really well actually no here's um a new leaf on this little let me move this red light here i believe it's a mayday cutting japanese maple mayday in the shishikoshara family that's a new leaf so that could be rooting some of the other maples in here don't show that much change, if any at all. And I'm expecting kind of the softwood conifer cuttings would be the last to root. Okay. This fig cutting right here has a fig growing out of it. I want to pluck these off because I don't want the energy to go into fruiting. I need it to go into rooting. And so that's it. All right, let's follow up here. It's been about 25 days. And uh, I've had a number of things. Turn off the light so it makes it a little bit easier to see in this reel. Okay, here we go. I have seen a number of things kind of you know, develop in this humidity bin. First off, beautyberry. Look how much growth this thing has put on. That's a good two inches. Um, does it mean that it has roots? I don't know. Uh, and I would need to check. But the beautyberry literally um, showed the most development within the shortest amount of time. So I need to check the roots on that, but I would think that there are roots developing for it to be able to push out that much, that much new growth. Um, and that's why the light is very important. It'll feed the plant, photosynthesize, so it can create the plumbing necessary to become uh, a tree on its own. As of now, it's so humid that if I uh, expose it to kind of the room temperature air and the um, humidity of the, the bathroom, which is around 64, 65, typically. It goes up when somebody showers. Um, it still uh, kind of does this wilty thing because it's so used to having um, about 90 humidity. So the Prunus Mume here. Flowered and now it's pushing leaves. Doesn't mean it has roots. Um, so it's kind of a natural thing that these guys will do. Uh, I especially experienced that during uh, Chinese New Year, where people take flowering apricots and 
put in water and you get these beautiful blossoms around the same time. The fig is white Madeira and there's a lot of new, new leaves. Doesn't mean there's roots. Sometimes there's leaves before roots. Ideally you want roots before leaves. And then um, juniper is going to be in there for a while. It'll probably take the longest. Black pine might need years. I can already see one of the cuttings here is turning a little bit brown, which means that uh, that one may be a goner. But these two are doing okay. And uh, here's some of the Japanese maple cuttings. They are pushing new buds, leaf buds. And those are sprouting to leaves. There's some back here that have already done that. See that? So yeah, 25 days later. And um, that's the update so far. And you can see here where you know the, the cuttings touch like the the sides or the lid and develops mold right here too where it touches the sides um i go in with sometimes a cotton swab or i'll just pinch it off and nip it in the bud before it gets any worse so yeah perfect environment to root but also to grow mold so you always got to watch that daily i look at this thing daily and i open it up and just kind of air it out and just kind of give it a uh, a little bit of a shock so that it starts to acclimate a little bit more to drier air um that way i don't shock it completely when i transplant because rooting it is easy it's passive transplanting is when you run into the problems of you know wilting leaves breaking very crucial uh, roots and um, so yeah you want the tree to be healthy and as strong as possible before you do any kind of transplant so that's it today is January 10th and that's 25 days later All right, it's been a full month since I've set this uh, humidity chamber up. See the condensation that happens here on the uh, on the lid. This little box is another rooting experiment that I've got going, but let's do a follow up. Full month. The uh, fig cuttings look really good. They are sprouting a lot of new leaves. You can actually see some mold here on some of the uh, some of the juniper cuttings, um, and I'm going to have to remove that before that spreads and turns into something bad. Beautyberry, all of them look like they have leaves. I don't know about roots, but you know if they're pushing out almost two inches of new growth, I'm thinking that is going to start. Um, being able to photosynthesize and create its own energy. So uh, all of the maple cuttings are showing leaves. Not all. Most. And um, I don't know about the juniper cuttings in here. I've added mulberry cuttings. I've added another fig variety. And... Um, Here's something that I want to probably go ahead and pull out since I'm already going to take out some of the other moldy stuff. Um, this Japanese maple, excuse me, Japanese black pine cutting. This one is clearly dead. It's dried, it's shriveled up. Uh, it's a goner. Compared to these other two, it's these ones are okay. So I may plug in a couple of new cuttings into that since I have space. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out those two other ones as well. 
the important thing here is, you know, getting rid of all the moldy bits. All right. So, this is a January 20th update. I'm noticing that, <clears throat> and with the figs, they show some discoloration, which means um, they're lacking nutrients. These lights are not enough to keep them photosynthesizing. So what I've done is I've got the blue stuff, miracle Grow, diluted it um, by much more than the recommended dosage. And I'm going to just spot feed these. Just so that it gets just a little bit of nitrogen. Green up those leaves. Just a tiny little spot check here and there. Okay. I know the conifers probably don't have any roots, but I'm just going to put a little bit in each pot. Finish it off like that. Okay. We'll follow up with these guys in a couple days to see if that made any difference in terms of the uh, coloration. All right. Today is June 5th. Let's take a look at what's going on in the propagation box. I've got fungus happening on this cutting here. And uh, I should probably go ahead and cut that off. But I'm lazy, so I'll do it later. <laughs> Beauty berries are doing good. I put some new uh, ficus cuttings into here. I see a little problem right now. This white Madeira cutting is limpy. And I'm not sure why. These other ones seem okay, but this one's getting limpy too. Maybe I need to take them out now and uh, I've been watering them and I'm not quite sure what's happening there. It's part of the acclimation process perhaps, but uh, I'll have to check the roots to see what's going on there. Some of these maple cuttings are actually looking okay. I mean, look at the leaf on that one right there. That tells me that it has some really good energy stored up somewhere to get that leaf that big. So some of the ones that uh, kind of push out leaves and then just would wilt immediately, um, those have already passed. So like that. Okay, so let's take a look at these figs. I think I need to repot them. Okay. Well, it's been, uh, I'd say almost two months since I started this winter dormant cutting rooting project um, back in December. And I had a lot more plants than this in the container, but um, these are the ones that I see as um, being ready for an up pot. And so I've got it on my table over here. We're going to go through these and, and then see which ones have been doing well and which ones have not. Okay. So we're going to start with the obvious. Cork bark black pine. These ones here, this one looks like it's okay. Wonder if there's still some green underneath. This one looks okay, but I have so many cuttings of it, I don't really need to try to save it. So this goes into the garbage. 
are compost. See these ones? They are completely dried out and dead. Okay? So that's that. Let's take a look at something else. Let's look at these figs right here. You can see the roots coming through the bottom. I mean, some of them are doing great. Some of them are not too great. Uh, I see three that have uh, desiccated a little bit and, and, you know, they're dried up and withered. And then three, they're doing fantastic. They look fantastic. Leaves look good, and um, this one's a little droopy, so I have a feeling the roots are not doing too well in there. Um, but we're going to take it out and see what they look like, okay? I'll be honest with you, these roots aren't terrible. They actually look pretty good still. And I wonder if this, this cutting is still viable. I don't know. It is kind of soft. These are uh, white Madeira cuttings. I'm pulling out all the ones that I think that are dead. I don't know, they, they, they just failed. You know, the roots look pretty good, but they just failed. So I don't, I don't know what... This just happens, right? When, when you're rooting figs and other kinds of trees, sometimes they just don't work. look pretty good actually I don't know what's causing it could be um, fungal I'm not 100% sure I don't want to give up on them completely but at the same time I'm just kind of like I got so many trees I don't want to go through that process Okay, fine. Okay, I've got the white Madeira potted up, and now let's take a look at another pot full of cuttings. This is the uh, Beauty Berry, and these rooted out, or they leafed out, very quickly. Apparently, Beauty Berries are super easy to propagate because... They were the first to show leaves, new leaves, and also um, they kept them all. I mean, I think almost everything in here ruby. So we're gonna look and see what it looks like. I'm just gonna dump this perlite into the soil here so we don't waste it. Right. We use this into our mix. Take a look here. Oh, false hope. Hello. Leaves, but no roots. Wow. Okay. That doesn't mean that it's over for that cutting, though, because I'm going to throw it back into the box. And this one has roots. Tiny, 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 tiny roots. I'm going to put this back into the prop box. Again, leaves with no roots. Wow, okay. It's kind of tricky. I was hoping 
with all the leaves that they had, those these are the ones that have no roots at all. So we're gonna throw it back into the propagation box. I'm just gonna go through the rest of these. Alright, here's a good one. Look at the roots on that one. Very nice. And this is a tip cutting. Right? You don't see a cut mark up there. I wonder if that has anything to do with why it's a little bit more successful. <clears throat> I'm doing this on Valentine's Day. And we're still getting a lot of frost in the morning, so I'm a little worried about putting these outside. I'm going to have to find a place for them and um, keep them indoors and then start acclimating, <clears throat> excuse me, start acclimating them to another one with good roots. Again, another one with tip cutting. That's, a, that's a, that from the top. Look at that. It's already pushing out flowers at that stage. It's kind of kind of wild. I don't want it to do that because that's uh, a lot of wasted energy into um, a uh, little cutting here that doesn't really have a lot to waste. Okay, brand new roots, brand new leaves. Barely knows how to photosynthesize. It's a baby. And for it to have fruit would be not ideal. Here's a nice one right here. Look at the roots on that one. This is not a tip cutting. Let me see that. I'm going to put it back into this here. Wow, and this has flowers. I'm gonna have to show you guys here in a second. I see pink flowers already on this little tiny cutting. I don't want that to happen. Excuse the dirt. But try to take a close look at that. Look at that. There's flowers. See the pink flowers on there dangling? Yeah, that's flowers. Pretty cool. This one has a little tiny root, little, 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 little tiny root. Almost feel like I need to combine these two. I have such little root. And my guess is these would more likely fail than the other ones. We'll just combine them together here. One dies. I'll get at least one out of it. Okay. So that is the beauty berry. These ones need more time in the prop box. And the mix that I'm using right now is Coca Core, Perlite, and um, pine bark, small pine bark. I don't want to use any kind of bag peat right now because you know I'm going to keep these inside. And I found that with peat, they develop mold, which then. Um, attracts the yeah, fungus gnats, which I hate. Okay, look at the last pot that we're gonna do today. So I've got some bougainvillea in here, um, and some juniper cuttings, and some fig cuttings, and um, this one showed roots coming out of the bottom, so I know something has rooted and done really well. I don't know what, but 
It's a bougainvillea? Yeah. That's a bougainvillea cutting. Can you see the roots down there? Very little, but it's there. And we're just going to give this its own little pot. Okay. Cute little tiny pot. Oh, the roots on this one is not bad at all. Look at that. Pretty decent. Again, another small pot. I'm just gonna... and at this stage, they're so delicate. Uh, I don't want to try to pack down the, the soil very much. I just want to push it down. Um, because if I push too hard, more than likely, I'm going to probably break that root. This cutting didn't make it. This cutting did not make it. On the dead one. These guys get pretty tangled up in here. I don't want to rip and tear them apart. Oh, look at that. Look at the roots on this one. There's a hair. This is my wife's hair. How did that get in there? She must be, uh, Sneaking a look at these <laughs> while, while I'm sleeping. Okay. I'm running out of soil. I need to grab some more. This is this is what I love about propagating plants. Is there's a certain level of um, happiness that you get from creating something out of something that you would have you know thrown away and um, that makes me pretty happy uh oh we've got big cuttings here that have rooted and they look fantastic but I didn't label them don't oh well Throw them in a pot, wait till the fruit comes out, and then uh, we'll figure it out. Two cuttings up. Really fantastic roots. And if you... You root big, sometimes you don't need rooting hormone, but the way I look at it, I go... Um, rooting hormone is like starting a fire with a lighter. Now you could start a fire without a lighter, but how long is that going to take you? You know, you're 99.9% .9 guaranteed to start a fire with a lighter. And you could do everything by hand without a lighter to start a fire, but chances are a lot lower without a lighter. So basically, rooting hormone just makes your life easier. Gives you a little bit more of a guarantee to, you know, root the cuttings. And, um, so why not? Rooting powder cost is cheap, right? Why bother not using it? I mean, it can save you some time. So these juniper cuttings, nothing yet, but it's still green. So I am just going to replug that into the pot that's going back into the propagator. Yeah. I figure these take a lot longer to root, and um, I'm just going to put them back into the propagation bin. All right. All right, so let's take a look at what we've done. These are the figs. Right here, some white Madeira cuttings, uh, unknown cuttings. I stuck it in there for good reason. They're probably some kind of valuable variety. Um, I just forgot to label it, unfortunately. Got bougainvillea to root. Got beautyberry to root. All within less than two months, uh, from rooting to potting. Okay, so. We're going to follow up 
and check on some of the other cuttings, you know, the maples especially, to see what they look like in about another month or so. But within two months, these are the ones that rooted. The figs, the beauty berries, the bougainvillea. Um, that's about it. So I'm going to put this into some kind of humidity chamber or something to keep them from wilting. Because this, this right here tells me it, it has not developed the cuticles in the leaves to be able to handle the drier air. None of these. Okay, see you in about a month. All right, this is a February 28th, end of February update on the uh, propagation box, my dormant cutting propagation box. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I pulled out all of the maples because they honestly look terrible and they all look dead. So, yeah. There's one here that looks like it could be alive, but the rest of these, let's, let's pull them out and see if we have any roots. Highly doubtful. Yeah, those, those look like good Tinder. Not Tinder the dating app, but you know. Yeah, they'd be good fire starters. Okay, so I'm pulling out all what I think are dead, which they are. And then there's these two here that look green. Pull this one out. And it's green, but there's no roots. See that? That's not good. So, the dead one there. Green, but no roots. Yeah, so that one's a bust. <clears throat> Let's look at the other dead looking. Not so dead. There's a couple cuttings in here that are still green. They've got leaves. This one's even pushing out a new leaf. So maybe not a complete fail. Let's go ahead and pull out the obvious. Okay. See, these, these actually have fungus on them. I did notice a few fungus gnats kind of lingering around the prop box. Oh. So I accidentally tugged this one out. And it does look like... It has the beginnings of uh, some roots. So that's promising. Very promising. Okay. Um, these guys out. I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to give these guys... This one has a little bit of... See that? Yeah, it's callousing, and it looks like, you know, there's a start of roots, but definitely no roots. So, something is alive in this tree, or sorry, this cutting. So, I'm, I'm going to try something. I'm going to mix it with some sphagnum moss. I feel like this soil, <clears throat> touching it now, it, it's moist. It probably has pretty decent humidity, but uh, I'm going to try to 
mix it with some sphagnum moss and perlite and then see what happens with that okay all right let's pull out this one and this has some very obvious dead branches so we're just gonna tug these ones out okay so this is this is about two months of being in the propagation box and I'm gonna shake it loose a little bit so that way I don't end up breaking roots potentially but no roots again but it's still alive so oh 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 I had my finger there the whole time this one definitely has roots and it's coming out of the bottom look at that okay we can work with this I'm trying to do this one-handed and I'm afraid that um, might bust this one single root that has come out through the bottom of this this thing okay so I gotta kind of finagle it and there it is one successful cutting out of about four or five dozen very cool there it is is it worth it? Yeah! Heck yeah! If I can get this, I forget what variety this is, I have to look it up. Uh, it could be Kiranagishi, but uh, if I can get some Japanese maples on their own, on their own uh, rootstock, it makes for a better bonsai. Okay, so I've got some sphagnum moss. Remix some of the perlite that it was in And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replant these guys back into this mixture. I Almost want to reapply and I probably will I'm going to reapply some um, Rooting powder on these guys because they're, they're almost there. They're almost there Yeah Why not give it just a little bit of a kick in the pants? To get them to root some more right? Okay. I think I'm going to put the one with the roots into a different pot. No way I don't get these ones mixed up. Okay. These three are going to go back into the propagation box. And I have a sense, I'm not going to pack anything down, I'm just going to keep it pretty loose. <clears throat> I have a sense that they might, they might root. I just need to give it a little bit more time. I'm going to clip off some of this stuff right here, cosmetic dead branches that is kind of annoying me. So that's it. This is going to go into back into the prop box. And then... We're just going to mix some of the same stuff. I'm adding a little bit of cocoa, cocoa, um, cocoa core. I almost called it cocoa peat for this new cutting. Very loose draining, and uh, it has been raining a ton here in Seattle. 
which is great, but it's also really wet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and put it into a humidity tank that I have right behind you. It's out of frame. So that way it can start to acclimate to drier conditions and I'm not putting it directly into a uh, oh, okay some smith cuttings that I started uh, in November oh my goodness these are November cuttings I did it straight lava rock okay and it's taken a while but you know they're finally rooted and they're doing well you see that So, let's take a look at these. Oops, ended up breaking that root off, but it's okay. There's actually a ton of roots, a ton of roots between the two cuttings. They look great. They look really good, actually. So this was lava rock. And these are smith cuttings. I had had really bad experience rooting smith cuttings because every time I've done it in the past, like literally they they just died and root and rotted. So this is why these were started in November and they not really ready until about three months later. But I do have two nice cuttings out of that, so that's good. Okay, same deal. Kind of using a little bit of this cocoa core mixed in with this perline and lava rock. And these have been kind of acclimating pretty well. I've kept the prop box open pretty wide. And these are right next to where that opening is. And so the leaves should be, should have some developed cuticles that can handle drier air. But I'm probably going to stick it into my humidity fish tank as well. So that way um, they don't dry out. As you can see here, I have been getting into more tropical house plants. Don't judge me. I know it seems like a big fad, but um, it's kind of interesting. Okay, I almost forgot about this pot. These are clearly dead. What sucks is this is actually the Prudus Mume cuttings, which I thought would do real well with rooting. So look, inside of this fish tank, about 80% humidity in the, on the hygrometer. So if you look, these guys are doing okay. There's no wilting. These are still rigid, and uh, looks like it's doing okay. 
I forgot to uh, actually water these guys. Why would I do that now? You know, I haven't done an update on this bin here for a few weeks. And it's now March 10th. And we are approaching the third month of this prop box. And I've already kind of cycled through some different cuttings. And so the ones that remain are the junipers. These four right here. And of course this black pine cutting that is most likely dead, but it's not brown yet. So I haven't given up complete hope on it. Uh, I have moved some more things into here. I've got a Florida Beauty, Philodendron, some jade cuttings, Tridents Cantias, some Hoyas, uh, some new maple cuttings. These are all rough bark. Beauty berries have kind of left in there, and these are variegated hibiscus, um, which look absolutely amazing when uh, you see the variegation. Got a pepperoni in there, hoya, and then some ficus cuttings, and begonia as well. Here's a monstera, uh, stipocana, or something like that. But yeah, this is the last batch from the original cuttings that I put in here. So these junipers have been in here almost three months, two and a half roughly. And I want to see whether or not they've rooted. Um, I'm looking at this tip right here and that looks like new growth to me. You know, if, if, if they've died, they usually turn brown. And I've pulled out a couple of the brownies from here already. So let's take a look at these and find out how they're doing. It's almost spring. So if I put them up, I'm just going to put them straight into the greenhouse and then take them outside after about a month. That way um, I can protect them from kind of the nightly frost that we've been getting. Just yesterday, I think we had kind of the snow hail, which was insane. Let's look at these shoe box. These shoe boxes have um, cuttings from Harvey that I bought. And look at how many fungus snaps are thriving in this thing. Sucks. I hate it. Um, yeah, I don't like that at all. I'm going to have to, uh, I like reusing my sphagnum moss, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to throw these into some, like, hydrogen peroxide and kind of really wring it out. Anyway, some of these are ready to go. I do want to show you something else. Um, so I've been looking at fig varieties to do bonsai with. There's one variety called the Afghan Lyre Fig. And look at how tiny and beautiful those little icicle-like fingers are. So typically with figs, you know, they have really big leaves. These guys have these interesting tiny little finger leaves. And that's why I sought, sought them out. And uh, I want to turn those into kind of bonsai. They should look pretty neat. Do a quick update on this bid now. Today's March 14th, so we're about halfway through halfway through the month. I'm gonna turn off this light because it is impossible to see things regularly. And uh, look at this. This is supposed to be the variegated hibiscus. It doesn't look that variegated. I don't know. Maybe that will change with light. But, um, yeah, it's kind of bronzy. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. But, um, you know, here's a beauty berry. These are kind of the leftover ones that didn't root the first time I pulled them out. So, dead one right there. And the rest still look turgid. They're pushing. Which means there's a, there's a chance. There's definitely a chance. 
that there's still a lot. Okay. Um, I'm guessing that most of these juniper cuttings have taken. There's a little browning on a couple here and there, but you know the dead ones are have turned completely brown. So yeah, yeah, I've stuck all sorts of stuff into here, and you know all the uh, tropical stuff like the succulents or. Not really tropical, but the, the ficus down there, uh, Hoyas. I mean, they rooted almost immediately, so. Alrighty. We're doing some follow up on my humidity bin. Okay. So, dude. I saw a poof of like moldy dust that came off of the uh, Pakistani mulberry cuttings. That's not good. So anyways, I wanted to follow up on kind of the last of what was in the propagation box and um, <clears throat> some additional things that I've added to the propagation box so you know that I've been rotating in and out. And um, I wanted to look at all of these juniper cuttings now, juniper cuttings are relatively easy to root. You don't have to put them into a propagation box. You can just put it into a greenhouse or you know, kind of some kind of humidity dome or bag um, to achieve the same effect when you root them, um, let's say in the spring or the summertime. But I also wanted to look at this final Japanese black pine cutting here. Um, it doesn't look dead, but it doesn't look like it's rooted either. So, you know, I want to make sure that um, I can check it to see whether or not it's worked. So let's go with the obvious first. Let's look at these Pakistani mulberry cuttings. <clears throat> okay. those guys out of the way and these don't look good I've never really had any success and they might be just too thin um, you could see that there I don't know if that will allow you to see it maybe I'll focus on my hand there dead 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 dried up shriveled dead um, I think this root came off of a fig cutting that was in here, so. Yeah, Pakistani mulberry cuttings, no bueno. There's several roots in here. They definitely came off the fig, though. But anyhow, <clears throat> no success there. Uh, let's take a look at this one. This one has the Japanese black pine. And that is 100% unsuccessful. So there it is. Take a close look, hopefully it's focusing on it. It's still green, usually it turns kind of, you know, brown by the time, um, I don't know, it dies, so within like a couple months. You could root um, these jade cuttings, you know, just in soil, leave it on to your window seal or whatever, and it'll do just fine. I stuck it into the humidity bin just because I have it, and I've got roots here in less than like two and a half weeks or so. Yeah. So yeah, totally unnecessary to have a prop box for jade cuttings. And I'm actually going to pot this. Um, let's get it out of there. It's got roots already. Got a couple other cuttings in here. Some, some Hoya. Oops. There's a Hoya that's got roots all over. And it's done a pretty good job of 
holding on to the perlite. Uh, this took about maybe three weeks to get to this point. So these things are really, really, really easy to root. I mean, there's literally no effort whatsoever. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and put this Hoya into uh, a box. I'm not quite sure what variety this is. Some common one from that you could probably find in any big box store. Okay, let's take a look at these uh, cuttings. Big cuttings. Which one was this? It's just some little tiny Olympian cuttings. I wanted to see if skinny cuttings would or would not make it. That one did not. This one... This one didn't either. These are just little skinny Olympian cuttings. It's got a leaf and no roots. Maybe just a little bit too wet, so I could see that it's, uh, yeah, it's rotting, and I could peel off the bark. So that one's not good. Um, move over to what we're kind of this video is about. It's about these juniper cuttings that have been in here for uh, about three months. And uh, instead of yanking it out, because I'm really scared I'll break the roots on these guys, I will uh, instead uh, shake out the perlite and then take a look at the roots that way. Okay. Ooh, that's a good root. Wow. All right. Cool. And... We're getting close to spring here. It is March um, 14, and I can go ahead and probably put these guys outside because it, it is a raining a ton, and I don't need the prop box to root cuttings, juniper cuttings. Wow. Even this little tiny cutting seems to be callousing over and about to root. So I'm going to stick this one back in here because uh, I'm going to give it another chance. Okay, this one. No roots, but callousing. Here's one with good roots. Check that out. See that? That will go into a pot. I'm going to leave that into the other bin here. No roots. So I'm going to go right back in. Look at that. This one has a root. Okay, that's going to go into a pot. This is the perfect type of cutting to be able to, you know, wire and then twist and turn and then create those ridiculous bends. Here's another one, little guy. It's got roots. That's very good. There's a dead one. Throw that away. No roots on this guy. And put it back. This one is dead. We'll throw it away. Another dead one. We'll throw that away. No roots, but still green, so I'll put it back into the prop box. There's another tip cutting with the roots. Tip cuttings seem to do pretty well. Tip cuttings, but no roots. They're not dead, so I'm just going to throw it back into the box. Callousing over, starting to develop roots. Okay. Here's one. 
with roots, good size. Okay, and I'm just gonna go through these real fast. Dead, not quite dead. Needs to root some more roots. <clears throat> no roots. Not yet. So all the not yet, so I'm just gonna throw it back into the propagation box. Not yet. Just give it a little bit more time. Oh, this little guy's got roots on it. Another little one, no roots. Just put it into that back into this one. Big one, no roots. This one has a little bit of root, one tiny little root. I'm gonna go ahead and plot that one. No roots. This one's got a little root. Those ones are dead. Oh, this is a really good one. Look at the roots on that guy. Okay. Um, Goner. Goner. Okay, nothing else in there. Little guy, not quite dead yet. This one's got roots, a little guy. And the last one here, no roots, I'm just going to stick it back into the propagation bin. Right, so I would say as far as success goes, um, under 50% with the success ones, um, and about 50% not rooted yet, <clears throat> and just a handful here, I mean these are cuttings you could easily throw away when you uh, shape your, your bones eye, your juniper bones eye, and um, I've turned them into new trees, which is literally making something for nothing. Uh, and so, yeah, it's totally worth it to try to propagate your juniper cuttings because, you know, getting four out of ten cuttings to root, these ones will probably root with some additional time. <clears throat> can one, save you money, and then two, it's fun to do. I mean, I love propagating plants. Okay, so I'm just gonna put some of that perlite back. I've got one more thing here. Uh, there's a Hoya that I just stuck in here, so it technically doesn't belong. <clears throat> and, um, Anyways, this, these are the cuttings that I got off of my ficus, the Costco ones. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I think most of them have rooted really fast too. Like, I, I think within two weeks, you know, they were kind of anchoring themselves in. So if I gave it a little bit of a tug, they did not come out, which means that, um, there's probably roots down there, okay? I'm gonna dump these out instead of pulling them, which may, you know, break the roots. Okay, some of them are tangled up. And there was one new one that I, I stuck back into there recently, and this is it. It's got no roots yet, but it's only been in there for a few days. Okay, so, look at this. I've got this one. It's got roots, but it doesn't have any leaves, so I don't know what's going on there. Um, one, two, four cuttings that have rooted super easily, and I, I use rooting powder on all of these.
Okay, so I've got them all in pots. These three are actually going back into the humidity bin. I'm gonna put all the juniper cuttings outside, as well as the figs. It is raining a ton. I'm gonna let Mother Nature do my watering for me. And then um, I find that when I do leave them inside, you know, the air in the house, the humidity in the house, is just too dry for them. So um, I get about, I don't know, 50% success if I don't, you know, add another bag to increase the humidity. If I go outside, I don't have that problem. And then I'll let Mother Nature kind of take care of the rest. So um, here are the ficus cuttings and the Hoya, the jade plant, a little dirty. It's fine. Um, once I spritz them, they'll look a little bit cleaner. So that's it. I think that's kind of the conclusion of this propagation project that I started in the wintertime. You know, it's just, it was just to lessen the boredom. Um, however, in the making of this video, uh, I did have a couple family tragedies uh, where two of my sibling, siblings uh, passed due to cancer. So I had my brother Dale, who, who died in January and then my sister Patricia uh, died in February so a month apart um, I don't know the last few years for our family has been pretty tough and uh, you know it's part of the reason why I haven't really been making a lot of videos is you know we've been in and out of hospitals in and out of nursing homes and in and out of services and and all that and so making videos was just kind of not priority for me you know focusing on my family and taking care of you know my brother my sister my dad you know back then it was way more important than making videos about plants so I hope you guys understand and um, I appreciate y'all tuning in so I'll see you next time bye so as you can see it is very worthwhile to create your own DIY propagation box. If I had to do it all over again, I don't know if I needed the, um, the, the heat mat. Sometimes it causes more problems than it's worth. However, my setup with the water at the, uh, the bottom of the bin really actually uh, kept the problems at bay. Because a lot of times with the heat mat, it can dry out um, your moss or dry out your propagation bin if it makes direct contact with it. The water of layer just created more condensation. And when I touched that water, it was pretty warm. I mean, I, I felt like it was probably in the 90s, um, even up to 100. So uh, for my shoe box cuttings that I had, when I had them directly flat on the heat mat, the, I, I noticed that when I opened up the, the shoe box, it was completely dry at the bottom of it. So all of the moss, all of the cuttings were all desiccated and dried out. Um, so I've turned off my heat mat and it just kind of left it with the bin, the, uh, the misting um, atomizer and uh, the light. And that seems to work just fine. So I hope you try this out for yourself. That way, you know, it's fun to make new trees and it, it's nice to be able not to pay for, uh, you know, younger plants.